Welcome everyone. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in today. I have my friend Maureen here today. We're going to be talking about a few different topics. One in particular, money mindset issues, money mindset traumas, and money mindset obstacles or challenges that you may be facing, especially if you watch this channel where I'm presenting some complex financial strategies that seem simple on the whiteboard, pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. But then when you try to take that and go do it yourself, there seems to be maybe some sort of a block, like why am I not getting this? Or maybe you do have some success in your personal finances, you get a little uh, small victories, you get things going, but then this habit of yours kicks in, the spending habit or this this habit of not being able to hold on to money when you're trying to save it. Um, there's all the statistics that we've seen about the average American not having more than $400 for emergencies. Most Americans don't have $1,000 saved. Um, mm -hmm. Most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and that number has been rising. And it's not just low income and middle income society, but there's also upper middle class and even, I would say, high, higher income earners, people who are making multiple six figures, even seven figures, so let's say millionaires, that I have the privilege and honor of serving. These people are also living paycheck to paycheck. So we've also heard, and, they, and I've said this many times on my channel, that it's not about how much you make, it's all about what you keep and even more so how you steward what you do keep, right? So I wanted to have a conversation with you, Maureen, and, and really just hear your perspective and possibly even some solutions that we could introduce on this channel. And just to give you an idea, for the past really five years, five, six years that I've been doing YouTube, my focus has always been logic, 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 logical moves, logical strategies, practical moves that people make, principles, strategies, concepts it's like i just need to explain it 500 million times and then they're finally going to get it right and that's kind of been my model i just keep saying it over and over again i just keep showing it to them over and over and over and over again eventually they will get it right now now that i've been in business for five to six years and have worked with thousands of people and i have hundreds of clients that i work with one-to-one -one, i have been noticing that there's a, a group of clients I work with that get really successful. They have fast success out the gate. They're good to go. And as I get to know that person more, I begin to realize, oh, before they came to work with me, they already had a good mindset. Mm -hmm. They already had some, some things that they had been already working on. And then all I did was add fuel to that and they were able to take off. Then I have clients that come to me with very little financial literacy and education and it's a and it's a building up and those clients take longer but do have success right then there's my third group here where whether they have a lot of knowledge little to none it almost doesn't matter how how smart they are right mm -hmm. but there's this group here of clients and it doesn't matter their age or ethnicity or none of that really matters it's this mindset that I'm beginning to become more aware of where I'm like, why don't you think like these clients do? Why are you not thinking the way that I think? I'm like, what, what is so difficult? Like, why can't you get this? And now I'm spending more, you know, after years of spending more time with this client, I'm like, hey, we've been together three years. We've been together four years. I met you when you were making 50 and you're only making 55 three years later or 60K. Like what's going on? Like, like that now I start to almost get slightly frustrated and I have to catch myself because I'm like, wait a minute, you know, this isn't, you know, my buddy, this isn't my friend, this isn't, you know, family or like I, I, I need to remind myself not to just kind of, you know, burst. I, I do it in my head more than I actually talk mm -hmm. on the phone, but I know my voice, I can kind of, uh, I think I, I kind of deepen the voice and I kind of go direct. And I've noticed over the years, I'll either push some clients away unintentionally where they mm. just simply, they just simply stop booking phone calls, right? Or they'll quit because they don't feel worthy enough, right? They, they, they actually, not that they have anything against me, they're actually so embarrassed to book a call with me because it's been three years, four years, mm. five years, and they're still 
not you know having the success so they're like i can't call denzel no way i i need to get my money right i need to do that and i'm like well it's not gonna work alone right so now i'm kind of like all right i need to figure out a way to address these sensitive money mindset obstacles and issues these traumas that these clients have that these people have and figure out uh, an environment uh, a, a safe environment where people can express their their faith express their emotions be challenged but also acknowledge and, and and becoming aware hey i see you for who you are you're worthy you can do this yeah and it's, it's a paradigm mindset shift and then once that happens it's like all these things when it comes to the, the strategies then they just start to click the light bulb goes off mm -hmm. right some people the light bulb goes off much faster than others and those are like the easiest people to work with um and then others take much longer periods of time and that's where i get to practice patience right so that i can you know improve myself and and increase the success rate with those uh, people that i'm working with right now so that's just kind of giving you the the the, the overview and i want to give it to you in terms of different things that you're working on and things that you're building um and really speaking to that that specific group that's what this video is all about is speaking to those people not the 99 sheep over here that mm -hmm. are with the the right people they're in the right environment they're in their their right faith they're protected i'm i'm going after the one just like yeah. our father in heaven will leave the 99 to go after the one all right so that's what i want to do here today yeah and i'm so grateful to be in this conversation with you because when you first started talking the thing that i kept hearing over and over again was you know knowledge doesn't equal behavior change so that's what we're really dealing with. It's it's the melding of those two. Like you have to know what to do and have the right strategies. Like you said, I'm all about logic, do this, then this. It's very analytical, formulaic, you know, one plus two equals three, X plus Y equals Z. If you do this, then that. Uh -huh. And so, but we as human beings, there's so much more involved than that. So if someone came to you, but they were just lacking in the knowledge part, and that's the problem that you could solve for them, then of course they're going to generate results because the reason they didn't have results in their life in that category and you're safe with wealth management and strategy and building, you know, legacy wealth and getting out of debt, velocity banking, you don't know what you don't know. So they come into your community. They now learn strategies and tools to help equip them to handle finances in a way that they lack knowledge before. So of course they're going to see a difference. And then there's um, like, I'm just, we do it as human beings in any category. Money's just one of them. I'll use my own example. Um, when I became an entrepreneur, I went into, I had a, my own peak performance health consulting business for six years. And the same thing, because Denzel, I'm really wired like you, like I'm very analytical and scientific. That's just my default. And I would tell my clients like, they come to me, they wanted to lose weight, reverse type two diabetes. And I'm like, you got to stop eating these processed carbs, got to increase the protein, like move your body. It was very formulaic. It was scientific. If you do this, then this, and they were struggling with pain and autoimmune stuff. And, you know, so there were other clients that just, they, all they needed was the system and the formula. They said, you just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And they implemented it and got results. And then there were the other ones where I realized I started getting on these calls with people and it was more, it ended up being more like therapy calls because it wasn't really about them lacking the knowledge at that point. Now it was getting into an emotional conversation. And I'll tell you at that time, I wanted nothing to do with it. I'm like, I am not a group yeah. for this. I am not a therapist. Like there are a lot of health coaches out there that just specialize in the emotional behavioral change part. I'm like, you hired the wrong person. I am the scientist. I just want to run the blood work and the DNA and <laughs> give you the system. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, and you know, I think about my own life too. Like I struggled with all sorts of disordered eating and different ways of self-sabotage and toxic relationship, especially before I really understood uh, my identity as a believer. I wasn't always a believer. I was atheist most of my life, right? So there's so many pieces of, of the equation involved with someone having a vision or desiring to make a change. And then what do they really have to do to get from here to there? And it's different for everyone. And for most people, it's not just a gap in knowledge because that's the quick fix. And maybe it is in the beginning, but you might have, I know you said some of those clients that have millions of dollars too. Uh -huh. And then it comes a different conversation. It's like, well, why are they still paycheck to paycheck or why 
if they have the tools, strategy, income streams open, are they not 10 xing it or generating even more, you know? And so there's, it, it, is it tied to like our self-worth? Also, are we tying results? This is something, so, you know, I went through a transformational leadership program, personal development stuff in the secular world. It served me a lot, um, but it was still secular. And there were still some things in there that I kind of questioned. And so uh, my best friend, Tara, and I had this vision. She really had the vision first for what we call now Lighthouse Global Ecclesia. We're a 508. Um, It started out as just a transformational leadership academy really for believers to go through in a safe space and, and, and dig up all this stuff like limiting beliefs, lies, what is really your vision and And why are you not accomplishing the vision that you have? Like, what is this block, this barrier? And so with Lighthouse Leadership Academy, the vision was where can believers go in a safe space where they can really learn about what their vision is, what God's calling them to do, really their identity in Christ, and then breaking down all of the lies that they've come into agreement with, either because of what they've been exposed to in their family, what they're unfamiliar with, who they really are called to be in Christ and what they have access to in the kingdom lies from the enemy. And is it impacting their relationships? Is it impacting their finances? Maybe it's impacting their health. But if it's not a gap in knowledge, then it's something else in this category. And I don't think that enough people realize how common this is because we are not in a society and a culture that makes it okay to authentically share and be vulnerable. Or we are afraid that, like you said, with, you know, your clients are afraid to even book a call with you. Right. We are afraid, you know, we carry shame. We carry guilt. Uh, A lot of people have wounds of rejection or abandonment because maybe they experienced that as a child. And so there's this deep sense of the desire to belong or to be seen. But a lot of people don't don't really even understand what that means or what that looks like. And so first you have to create a culture of safety in the body of Christ and really help someone under, understand their identity and what the truth is and expose the lies that have been blocking them from really achieving a level 10 in every area of their life. That's kind of what we cover inside of the academy. It's like on a scale of one to 10, what would you rank your relationship with yourself? What would you rank your relationship with, with God, with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with your family, with your finances, with your health? They're all really important. You know, we are called to take care of our bodies. They are a temple of the Holy Spirit. We know that. But what does that even really mean? And what does that even look like? We are called to be faithful stewards and managers of that which is given to us because, as you and I know, it's not ours anyway. So whether it's $1, $5, or $10 million, if you're faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. But what does that really even mean? And how can we walk in a way where we feel equipped and worthy and It's basically understanding what is the block in that area of our life, in this case, finances. Is it a lie? Maybe you had, like in my case, you know, I had a stepfather growing up that was very wealthy, but he sent me away to boarding school. Um, He wasn't a very nice person. And so I had this resistance to create wealth um, for many reasons. I believed that I wasn't worthy of love. I had abandonment and rejection lies that I believed in wounds. And I also had an association with anyone who was wealthy being a, just a terrible human being. Mm. And so I, and I think a lot of Christians and stuff and believers as well, there's this like martyrdom or they think that having money is bad or, you know, they misinterpret the scriptures and think that they need to live a life of being, you know, poor. So there's a lot of legalism. And I think religiosity that gets to be broken off with the way that people perceive it. And then realizing actually the more money you have, the greater impact you can make for the kingdom. And your assignment may be different than someone else's too. Not everyone is called to be a kingdom financer. You know, not everyone is called to be a business owner, entrepreneur, but there is no lack in the kingdom, you know? So it's really just going through and, and breaking, uncovering why we believe what we believe and then okay is that truth or is that a lie what does the bible say what does scripture say and then how can we equip you and what healing do you need or other tools 
to break free with the behavior and the emotional part of it. So you can get very clear on your identity, very clear in your vision for all areas of your life, and then fill in the gap with the logic right. and the political mm-hmm. part. Now the knowledge part can actually take root on solid foundation and you can really build something beautiful in this case, you know, financial abundance and wealth and strategy. But if it's not able to take root on something firm or solid, it's just going to crumble. And you probably see that they have a little bit of success yeah. and then they go back and then a That's little bit more and then they go back. And so there's never really any forward traction. It's just, it's getting stuck in that cycle because the emotional behavioral side of it hasn't been addressed yet. Absolutely. I think there's two things that came up for me that I'm starting to you know, ask my audience and ask my clients about it. It's like, what is your moral belief about that thing? You know, and in, in this context, say money, what is your moral belief about money? Do you believe that there's a limited amount of money in the world? Do you believe that not every human being should be wealthy? Mm-hmm. Do you believe that it's better to be poor mm-hmm. than to be financially successful? Do you do you believe that if you actually do become successful, that you're going to turn away from God because you witness that in the Bible? We see examples of that. And rather than seeing and witnessing what the word says about these people, that the, the routes that they took, like, like a Solomon, let's say, it's like, well, rather than get afraid of becoming like Solomon in the period where he turned away from God, why not just pull from the times that he was with God the whole way through and just simply avoid that pitfall. Like we get to learn from our ancestors. We get to learn from history instead of repeating history, right? Instead of using that as an escape. Mm -hmm. Oh, as a Christian, let let me not become so successful because I'll turn away from God or I'll, I'm I'm in fear that, you know, I'm going to be, you know, more worldly. And it's like, oh, you just gave yourself an escape. Actually, you could be uber successful like Abraham was. He was very rich in gold, silver, and cattle. Like it even was descriptive as to what he was rich in. Many Christians say he was rich in spirit. And I'm like, sure. But it also says in scripture, he was very rich in gold and silver and cattle. So I'm like, what does that mean? What does very rich mean? It means very rich. Like very is a strong word, right? If if you had to identify someone who is very rich today, I would, I would name Bill Gates. Elon Musk, um, Jeff Bezos, uh, Jeff Zuckerberg, like these men are very rich. So think about back in Abram's time, what that must have meant, mm. right? And then and, and we, 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 we get insight. He had hundreds of servants, right? That time where his, I think, nephew got kidnapped. I forgot his name. I think it was Lot. Um, and, and he had hundreds of servants arm up and they went to war and fought off different nations to save his nephew. I mean, you have to have money, resources, food, weapons, homes for hundreds of servants, right? And land, real estate. Like you had to have assets, cash flow, all these different things in order to even think about doing those types of things. So we fast forward things like that today. So it's like, yeah, what's your moral belief about money, right? Um, And the second thing that had really came to mind, I'm just gonna kind of take it to the whiteboard here, just kind of like recap is, you know, you had said more knowledge doesn't equal behavior change. I'm like, well, that's interesting because that's how I used to think. I was like, the more I will learn, the the better I'll get at this thing. And I mean, that's technically true. But if you're dealing with some kind of a mindset block, learning more about the strategy is not necessarily going to get you to change your behavior about what you believe about yourself, that, that, that lie. Or we could, we could, and then you also really said something on like how we come to term how we come to terms with this belief that this lie that we told ourselves so that's essentially like an adhesion contract right so it's like we're we're signing spiritual adhesion contracts Mm. that that bind us right it is very hard to break a spiritual contract especially when it becomes your literally your way of being your, your philosophy has completely been contaminated by a misinterpretation of scripture. You know, I think there's a famous one that talks about, you know, I think it was said by Jesus where he was like, blessed are the poor, right? Or they will inherit the earth. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now, 
Now, if I'm not mistaken, if we read the full context of it, I think we're going to draw to a different conclusion. And I don't think Jesus was saying poor financially because he didn't say that. He did not say blessed are the poor, the financially poor people on this planet. I don't think Jesus said that. I think he said blessed are the poor in spirit. And if we think if we kind of put this together, it's like, okay, well, could that potentially mean poor in ego, poor in pride, poor in personal ambition? Yeah. Personal gain. And it's like, oh yeah, I would, I want to be poor in my ego for sure. I want to be poor in pride and I want to be poor in personal ambition, but I want to be rich and wealthy in the kingdom, in Christ, with him. I want to be in abundance with him because I will be able to do more, impact more people, um, transform more lives, my life, people around me, people I care about. I'll be able to be a effective speaker, all right? And a, an effective priest, an effective provider, and a, an effective protector over the people I care about. So it's like, yeah, poor in the ego, but not poor over here, mm -hmm. right? So I think that right there might just is, is, a, is a huge, I think, uplifting where we get to we get to cancel that contract that we made with ourselves that Christians are to be poor and, you know, and it's like, well, poor in what? Like what? Because we now think poor, the word poor, we now correlate it to money. But someone could be poor in their health. Someone could be poor in their faith. Someone mm -hmm. could be poor in math, someone could be poor in history, someone could be poor in reading. So what does poor mean, right? It's 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 all within proper context. Extremely the other one we'll misuse all the time too is, well, money's the root of all evil. No, scripture doesn't say that. It says the love for money, meaning if you are making it an idol, anything that we love more than we love God, that's, that's what it cautions us you know, from. And I, I think another thing that we see, especially in the leadership academy, is we start to uncover, okay, well, where are we putting our identity and our self-worth outside of Christ? Like when someone really knows who they are and whose they are, then we can realize what lies we've been believing or come into agreement with. So that wealthy businessman, I mean, it's, it's really sad going back to, you know, 2008, like the really big last crash, the real estate market and the economy, how many high net worth people, CEOs of companies like end like the suicide rates, yeah. because when people lost everything that they had accumulated in the world, they felt like they had nothing left because their identity or their self-worth as a person was wrapped up in the millions in the bank and the results that they had created. And don't hear what I'm saying. That stuff's not necessarily bad. God's given us all different assignments, but it's never our worth. Our net, our net worth is not our identity. You know, my my friend and her husband are very financially well to do, and just being in their in their ecosystem has taught me so much about my own limiting beliefs around money. You know, she's she's the one that. Um, runs Lighthouse Global Ecclesia in, in uh, the, the academy with me. Um, but her husband is, he's so neutral about money and he sees it as a tool. I've been around him on days where they generate millions of dollars in their account because of businesses, stocks. And I've also been in their presence where they've lost millions of dollars in a couple hour period, emotionally unfazed. And either way, not celebrating the win and then in sorrow with it, just, right. just neutral. Un unattached. Money. unattached like completely unattached i remember the first time it happened i was like what you're not even going to celebrate that you just made millions of dollars in the lab I'm like my entire life would be paid for for the rest of but then on the flip side i thought about how distraught i would have been at that point in my life if the millions had gone down because he had such faith number one in god that understanding well none of it's mine anyway and god will always provide so it's really challenged me too with my own i'm like where have i been you know, and, and definitely we get to be good, faithful stewards for sure, but not the identity. I, I realized times where my investments or stocks went down or maybe a business didn't go the way that I thought it would, it would go where I got this fear and anxiety building up. And I was like, whoa, what does this really say about my faith? And so it was a way for me to increase my faith with God because I'm like, I know you say you'll always provide. You've never not taken care of me and may not look the way that I think it's going to, you know, so it's this beautiful opportunity for us to infuse our faith, our financial strategy, you know, um, our health, our relationships, really just seeking God first and having full faith in him and not 
not faith or peace based on what's in our bank account. Growing it with him, but knowing if that were to go away, do I still have faith that I'm going to be taken care of or confidence that he's going to provide the next opportunity and the people to mentor me and the strategies and the wisdom to increase my income and impact or the tools that I've been missing out on. So it's, um, I realized I was like, gosh, I trust him with my housing. I trust him with certain things. But when it came to finances, I was like, I don't, I, I wasn't, I didn't trust God. I'd need to mentor me to put the right people in my life, mentors, teachers. I still felt like I had to control everything mm-hmm. with that. Absolutely. And so yeah, we uncover all that in the Academy because it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's wanna... a lot to unpack and yeah. in a safe, beautiful, you know. And I would, and I would like to, take this deeper now. So just to recap again here, uh, we've got we've got two ministries on the board. And for my audience, they're they're familiar with this at this point with Finance Geek Ministry. And it really addresses a lot of the logical stuff, right? How we build kingdom financial structures and how we build a kingdom economic household that creates organic economic development for for the world and in their household and for the kingdom where we can operate in the world but not be subject to it. And it addresses all of the strategic moves of the worldly tools that we can use to our advantage, like money, like real estate, like business, like all these different things, go in the world environment, help those who believe, don't believe, in between, I don't know, somewhat so, right? Or never. We help all those people we stick to our spiritual, moral, principle mandates based on biblical context. And that's where I'm looking to now implement that part, that, that other half. And I would, as much as I love logical, I would argue this is vastly more important. Like it, it doesn't even come close. This doesn't even come close to the spiritual part. And this is just an area that I'm just, that's not where God called me to. He called me in this environment to provide the strategy. So then now he's showing me how to collaborate with the body of Christ to say, I have people for this son. So you don't mm. have to become the expert in everything. I got people in this department that can provide an immersive experience, uh, open up to those emotional conversations and have an environment shift. That's kind of like what I'm pulling from this conversation today as we talk about the ministry of Lighthouse Global Ecclesia, where it's like, yeah, how can two ministries come together to help this particular group of people that may be struggling And I would also say that, hey, there might be people watching right now that I've been working with for years and they've had a ton of success with their with their finances, but they're just not being lit up by that. They thought they would be where they when they got out of debt completely and started to, you know, save and invest. And don't get me wrong, they're they're happy, they're enjoying, but they're like, I'm I'm looking for something more. I want I'm I'm like there's a there's something that needs to be filled up and that gives me permission when they ask these these present these questions these thoughts that really gives me permission to speak about my faith more and say yes um, I've been able to fill that personally with with my faith and getting around people who are kingdom minded kingdom men and women that have successful marriages successful businesses in in Christ what that what that looks like versus the world and what our attention is focused on versus what the world's attention is focused on. And those are night and day. So if you could, I wanna go a little bit deeper here on what Lighthouse Global Ecclesia you know, does, um, how, how you guys serve people, what's the process and action steps for my audience to, to take to learn more, right? And I'll be sure to have a, you know, links below in the description that people can take that next action step. Yeah, that's awesome. So people can go to our website, which is Lighthouse Global Ecclesia. And and we really are an online church and God keeps bringing so many incredible people around the world. The vision was, you know, that to not be limited. I think people have a um, hard time finding local communities sometimes, or even a lot of us still go to church on Sunday. You know, Denzel, you and I go to the same church and and, and it's great, but there's still so much power in continuing to be in relationship with the body of Christ. And so we have people in Australia now and a lot of Canadians in the U.S. and Europe and Germany. But the vision that God put on our hearts was really these little pinpoints all over the world. It was like this map with lighthouses, like really rising up. The whole premise is like equipping the saints. So how can we really rise up kingdom leaders to go impact um, in the way that God has uniquely 
anointed and position them to make an impact for the kingdom and bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. And so just like in Ephesians 4, you know, some were called to be apostles, some prophets, some some priests, some teachers, and some evangelists. And that doesn't ever necessarily have to just look in a Christian context, right? Like teacher could mean you're in the public school system. You know, pastor just means you're called to be a pastor of a body. It could be you are a manager in your uh, secular corporation at work, but are you nurturing those people and the people that God has, you know, given you the trusted to be below, like, where are we ministering to people in our everyday life and just really be in the hands and feet. And so for those people that want to maybe discover what their identity is on a deeper level and break off religiosity and understand what kingdom culture is, um, find out maybe what their assignment is, what they're called to heal from wounds or lies, and then do it in a way that is um, super naturally accelerated in a four month period, we have something called the Academy. And so we do two classes a year and, uh, we do these virtual training weekends, but the, the community is in relationship the whole time with coaches, trainers, the coaches are volunteer graduates of the Academy who come back to be of service to the new students going through. We just build this really amazing culture of believers. Um, but then aside from the academy, just come be with us. We have a men's group that's going on called Airs. Uh, we have a women's group that meets every Thursday now. I don't know if it's going to change for 2024. It's every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's women's group. We come together. It's called Queens for the King. We have Anchor, which is for new believers or people wanting to question their faith or learn a little bit more and dive in about that. So especially as um, graduates come and they graduate from the academy, a lot of them already have their own ministries or were in some sort of, um, I don't know, we have like prison ministry that's joining. We have people who are building wells in Kenya and Africa. We partner with Divine Alliance. So you might see so many more things pop out on the website. And that's really what it is, is we just are wanting to find out how we can continue to work with the body of Christ and serve the body of Christ ultimately in um, full kingdom authority and helping people uncover their greatness and accelerating the process. So that's, yeah, that's beautiful. And I think that's important that there's, there's things that we do consistently that allow us to improve, make these 1% improvements, 1% improvements. What I like to always encourage my clients to kind of look at the big picture. Uh, you know, it may not happen overnight, but then there's things that we can do, like an immersive experience, um, you know, a an intensive, right? Whether it's like a three-day workshop or a five-day, you know, training, it's an intensive. It's like that allows acceleration to occur. Plus, you got to keep doing the daily activities, right? So it's mm -hmm. like whatever you want to become professional in, it's going to take intensive, hard work, physically, spiritually, mentally. And you want to find um, a, an environment where you can do that in a safe setting where you're allowed to really grow, where you have permission to grow exponentially, mm -hmm. right? And then um, edify those around you, grow and, and pass. It's like hot potato. You give all the glory to God and then God's like, yeah. you know, the look at the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, look at God. And Jesus is like, look at the Father. And God's like, look at my son. It's, it's this, um, it's the passing of glory, right? From, so it's like when we're in a, when we're in the body and when people, it's like, when we do that to each other, I'm like praising Maureen and then Maureen is given, you know, praise and credit back to, you know, someone else in the group. And then they can praise to me. And then I'm like, no, here you can hear some more praise for you. And it's like everyone, you, you remove that selfishness that we have mm -hmm. that, that greedy by, by becoming abundant givers, even yeah. when we lack say the financial ability to give and that's arguably the the least way to give i would mm -hmm. argue is financially right? and i think the 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 most impactful way we can give is spiritually right yeah and i think that's what like Light, lighthouse global is is really building so you've got these it, it's an online church which is exactly what finance geek ministry is as well it's 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 this segment of the ecclesia gathering right and you've been a part of it multiple times and we have these discussions and we, we gather, you know, two times a month and we're connected to another um, church as well that is a ministry of finance. So financing ministry is a ministry of finance. Lighthouse Global Ecclesia is a, is a ministry of, of really spiritual growth 
it's an academy. It's a discipleship. Honestly, if we if we really want to like just put the nail on the head, like this is discipleship. Like you're coming in here, taking the next four months. I mean, how many churches do we go to nowadays where it's just the Sunday experience? and a Wednesday night Bible study, right? It's just, it's not enough for the times that we live in today. It really isn't. When we're bombarded with thousands of pieces of content on social media, the church has got to figure out a way to provide more content, more, more time where people can say, yeah, let me withdraw from the Netflix. Let me withdraw from the TikTok. Let me withdraw from these podcasts I shouldn't be listening to, this music. And let me redirect that time to the kingdom. And Lighthouse Global is saying, yeah, we've got this ministry. We've got this study. We've got this academy. It goes four months long. It's intensive. If you're willing to go through it and open up, you're going to be around others that are willing to do the same. You get to really, really have some impactful things that occur. I, I, I spent three days of... Uh, of an event called All In For Jesus that Lighthouse Global was was running. And there were some things that really sat on my heart. I was like, yeah, you know what? I, I just wanna be a voice that that lets people know what's going on in the kingdom. Mm. And point people say, I think you should go there, right? I think you should go there. I wanna leverage my influence and credibility to say, hey, I think you should check that out. I think you should consider it, right? Do your due diligence, all that good stuff. Let's not just, you know, blindly just rely on what Denzel says. I tell my audience this all the time because we do live yeah. in a world where, where scams and misrepresentation also occurs at a, at a very high level now because we're we're very microwave society we want things fast but i always tell my audience do your due diligence don't just trust anyone i bring on the channel don't just give anyone um the same amount of trust that you you've given me i tell my audience like you've been watching me for three years and then became a client right mm -hmm. you watched me for a year yeah. and then became a client like do the the same equal or or that catered due diligence where you can say okay i've logically check the boxes now let me have us uh, let me go into this spiritually and emotionally and see if we're in alignment and then when you proceed you you spend time with people you grow in relationship that's when we get to open up and it does help that we're serving the same god in that arena where we're challenging our faith our thought process and we're allowing the word to speak through us and we're going through the context we're going through that material to improve i think that that's just the best way to go about things where it's like boom logic spirit spiritual comes together get that perfect that perfect union going and for those people that are struggling right now again was focusing on you today that are it's like you have the knowledge you have the strategy you've been watching the videos and you just keep getting blocked or it's like you try to do something and then this emergency comes up now this car needs to get repaired now i gotta change the tire and then this happens and this happens and it's like why do these things keep happening to me? Why do I keep attracting negative events into my life? Versus you see how other people, it's like nothing bad ever happens to them. You know, that's what it looks like. Nothing bad ever happens to these people and they're always healthy. They never get sick. You know, I'm <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I see that too. And I, I've witnessed that in my own life. Like um, just personally, it's been like almost two years since the last time I got sick and there have been like family members around me that that got sick and I spent like all the time around them like sick like flu like something that you can easily spread and I never got sick and I'm like yeah it's, there's I'm like thank you you're right like and, and it's like this things will happen in my life that are supposed to be viewed as negative and I look at it as an opportunity right like I've been dealing with the last two years it's like the weirdest thing every like month or two I get a flat tire <laughs> Like I have, I have three car leases, right? One for me, one for my mom, one for my fiance. And it's like, we're playing hot potato. I'm telling <laughs> you, it's like every month, every month or every other month since March of 2022, I've been getting flat tires. I'm like, there's no way I can run over this many nails. What is happening? Right. And so in the beginning, I'm like, somebody is trying to sabotage me. So I'm like, why did I go there? Whoa, 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 whoa. Then I'm like, God, what what thing did you just save me from? Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. accident did you just prevent me getting into? What experience did you just avoid me having? What traumatic event, tragedy, horrific thing that you just <laughs> evaded by allowing me to run over that nail again? And yes, it's going to cost me money. I get a patch. Uh, I'll get like two, three patches on the same tire. And then finally, I got to repair the whole, I got to just get replaced the whole tire. And each and every time I'm like, what 
opportunity are you presenting in front of me? What thing did you just save me from? I don't know what it was, Lord, but I just want to say thank you in advance for whatever you just saved me from. That's been my new shift in in thinking where I'm like, no, no, no. No one's sabotaging me. If anyone's going to sabotage me, it's going to be me, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not going to assume what I can't prove with evidence, and I'm just going to rely that God has a plan and there's things that he won't reveal to me for, for his reasons that are going to remain a mystery. And I'm just going to have faith in that. And I believe there's things like that that are happening in people's lives right now. Something to that example, maybe higher, maybe lower. And it's like it, it builds into something so much bigger than what it was. Like notice how I just said, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting flat tires and I'm running over nails. And then I blew it up to somebody is trying to sabotage me. Now that becomes my mindset. Now, every time I get into my car, I'm looking around to see, you know, or at night I'm opening my door to see if I catch anyone in the parking lot. I'm like, are you serious, Denzel? You're consuming your time, energy, and focus on, on something that's not even there. No one's there, right? And I'm like, whoa, how many times are we doing that for other things? And it bleeds and it just, we just blow it out of proportion. I'm like, it's not that serious. <laughs> just go change the tire. Like, it's yeah. not that serious. It's going to happen. Right. I, I share all that because now I'm, I'm learning in my practice, in my business that there's these emotional conversations. There's these things that are, that are happening that are really blocking us. And, you know, we're, we're living in a time of, you know, especially in the United States. I mean, we're not being invaded. There's not a war going on, right? There's, there's war in other places around the world, yes. But on the homeland, it's like, for the most part, we're in a peaceful environment. So oftentimes we create wars in our in our own mind, I think. I was having a wonderful conversation. You know, we go to the same church at Calvary and I'm in a group right now. It's called the Kingdom Men series. And it's like we're doing it for like six weeks. At my specific table, I'm the youngest guy there, and there's like three or four seniors that are like in their, you know, 60s, 70s. They've been married for years. And they were talking about wartime as it related to how they were raised by their fathers, right? By their fathers or stepfathers. So they were raised in wartime, whether it was Vietnam, whether it was World War II, or their fathers were in the war. Like they served in World War I or World War II. And then once the war was ended, the war came home. And, and the, that father didn't know how to emotionally connect spiritually to their children, to their wives. And they, they were just a protector and they were just providing, but they weren't being a priest over their household. Mm -hmm. So that spiritual never, you know, got there. And it's like, when we, when we track what's been going on in our lives from a very young age, we begin to realize, oh, wow, my, my parents were in wartime. Then the war ended, but the war came home that bled into my life that created belief systems about myself. And now I myself until now grew up in a, in a world where there, I didn't ever have to go to war. I was never drafted or recruited. Yeah. And the, the side effects of spiritual warfare never was addressed as a, at a young age. So we're, we're only given the logical stuff and then we wonder why we're having mental breakdowns all the time and why mental health and suicide rates are so high. And it's like, wait a minute, we're not at war. What's going on? And it's like, wait a minute, no, there's a different war going on. It's a spiritual warfare and it's the, and it's the warfare of ideas as well. The war mm -hmm. of ideas, things that come into our mind that contaminate us, get us to the point of literally ending it all, right? Yeah. Wanting to just, you know, clock out, exit, I'm done and, and not grow. So I went a little long there, but I think that was really, really important to just to share on that. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we close out um, or any, any, just um, touching on, step? yeah, I mean, no, just touching on what you said, it really is like we are in a spiritual battle, you know, and it really is the enemy is just in control in pursuit of control of our mind. That's how he gets to it. He can't control our actions. When we are believers, we cannot be possessed, you know, inside because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us, but he can try to attack our thoughts and control us that way. Whether it's self beat up or guilt or shame, or like you even said with the tire storm, I mean, it's just from all of it. It's just, that is his point of entry. And so we are called to renew our mind. We're taught how to do it in the scriptures. Um, and you know, what we, what we try to do in the academy is really accelerate the process and help people be aware of 
lies they've come into agreement with, what gets to be replaced with truth. And, and we have fun doing it, you know, like in the first training weekend, part of what we do is just the power of words, you know, where our words are so powerful. And so God created us with words, speaking things into existence, speaking creation into existence with words. And so we just get to be mindful. Something we have fun doing is we replace the word have to. We never use the word have to inside of Lighthouse Global. It's get to. Mm. Everything's a get to. And when you position it from a place to get to, you don't have to pay your taxes. Actually, you get to. It's a privilege because of what comes with being a citizen of the United States. Like you don't actually have to go walk your dog. You get to. And what are the benefits of of owning your dog with that relationship and the love? So it's it's just amazing when you start to change the words that you use on a daily basis and that reframe that happens like you did with the tire. Someone's yeah. trying to sabotage you. Like, actually, what were you saved from? Right. What did God save you from? What do you get to? Maybe you got to spend some quality time with your fiance on the side of the freeway and handling this breakdown that you wouldn't have had if you were just so busy going from one thing to the next. What are the blessings that came from it? What do we get to do? So that would be a fun thing if you're watching today and you just want to do a little exercise. Take the next five minutes and write down everything you have to do and then cross off have to and write get to and just see the emotional shift you can feel inside your body when you start to use the word get to for the rest of the day to day. So if anyone um, wants to hop on a call at any point to just share their testimony or you have questions, you want to go to the website. I know you said you'd put everything below. There's testimonials on the academy site from other students. We've had people that have restored broken marriages, families, created nonprofits, ministries, lost hundreds of pounds. So it's it's not a one result is the right. same size it's all. It's just it's whatever is meant for you to have when you are no longer confused about your identity and have accelerated healing of wounds and really just create that beautiful, deep, intimate relationship with the father. And then do it together as a team, a kingdom team. And collectively, they make an impact and raise money for an organization that they choose and contribute back to the community. So there's individual results and then collectively kingdom results. And it's just the best. I know that God put me on this planet to just like keep with you and your finance ministry. It's a gift you've been given. I know that I'm on purpose when I am helping other people learn about their identity and who they are in Christ and rising them, rising up kingdom leaders. Like that is my anointing. So it's an honor. Thank you so much for bringing this to your community today. Yes. Um, Yeah, it's great. It is is a blessing. It's a privilege. And I want to thank everyone that literally takes the time. Um, Those that, that really watch this material all the way through, you're, you're the ones that get the most value. Now the time is to take the action. So there's going to be a link in the description, in the comment section, to either get a hold of Maureen and, or check out Lighthouse Global Ecclesial. You can have it over this, over the screen links everywhere where you can Take that immediate action. Check this out. Compare, see, observe, learn. Get around people that are that are wanting to improve, right? And I'll leave you with that. God bless you all. Thank you, Maureen. And thank you for those that have tuned in. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon, talking with you soon, whether it's in Finance Seek Ministry or in Lighthouse Global as well. And I can't wait to do more work in the kingdom. Thank you and have a wonderful day. God bless.